Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Clash Bash. I am Elaine Hammontree, and I am joined yet again by Mo Bogsley. How are you doing tonight? I am great. We have such an exciting match coming up, like always on Clash Bash, and I really want to see this one. So I'm stoked. Yeah, I'm also really excited to see how these heroes perform in Clash. So let's just jump into it. What are your thoughts on this matchup? I'm really excited to see how these um, heroes perform in in Clash in particular. Um, I think that the I think that Icelanders specializations are going to be much more important in this matchup than Jerome eyes will be. But I'm excited to see. Right off the bat, we see Goliath Gauntlet, which makes me think it's more like a bully lander list with those big attacks that Michael Hamilton made so popular in CC. Uh, and Jomai has AB1, I believe. So if she ever gets too low, Icelander can just blow her up, which is a little bit scary. AB1, but you do have the Ash Wings. Jomai with a oh. sick turn zero play. Using Glory Seeker to pitch three reds to make three ash, just so much value and a play I never thought of in Clash. Look at this hand. Yeah, three ash, yeah. Three ash. These are both really powerful turns. Like the getting Frost Hex out immediately and then making three ash immediately. Like. Yeah, and the. The Jomai's turn so, is going to be Sweeping Blow, uh, Dune Breaker, Dune Breaker, if there's no Popper in hand. That's such a powerful turn. That's what, 13 points of damage in one turn? Yeah. Is there a Popper in the Icelander's hand? We also have to wonder what Icelander has an arsenal. If Icelander it does not look that, like there. Yeah, I was going to say, if they can play that card at Arsenal, they can get right back into this this turn. But Jomai holding on to the Doombreaker, keeping her red to play just in case she draws some dragons. Very heads-up play. Goliath Gauntlet being broken. They did have the popper. They just wanted to attack for 10. <laughs> They're just swinging. On number six, we can see as will I blocked. We'll break the embers. Make some ash wings. This is very important to get some additional AB. So if you have a Jaha Blue, you can have AB3. Also, just a chip in there. Uh, basically demanding a popper or a targeted blue spell from Arsenal every turn to kill one of these ash wings to end this turn. So something like... Uh, Sap, I believe, can target dragons. There's a few other blue one damage spells that Icelander can play from Arsenal for free. Just point out that um, Dromai just made three Ash Wings, but also made three additional Ash on that. So three Ash Wings up, three Ash to four AB. Pretty good spot to be in. Icelander respecting it with a Popper and a blue Aether. Ice Vein, revealing an ice card. So if any of this damage is dealt, Jomai will have to discard a card. Jomai has no cards in hand, so that discard isn't super effective, but that is still three damage getting through to the Jomai. And the second rig that Ember is drawn by the Jomai, uh, sending up more of these little annoying pests that are just going to fly around your face and almost like mosquitoes, just annoy you. Ice Bind fusing with a Cold Snap. Yeah, so this one does any damage. It will lock Jomai's arsenal for next turn, uh, which you really don't want to let happen. But as we can tell, Jomai only has one blue, so they have to commit it either this turn or not commit it. And it looks like they will commit the blue. Play another break the embers. Yeah, and a good thing about these Dromai decks too is usually they they are they're pretty red heavy. The the blue is not the resources are not super important except for preventing arcane when you're playing against an Icelander. Icelander did play a cold snap, followed by a waning moon. 
So Cold Snap is going to, I believe that's the one that freezes the Arsenal, if I remember correctly. So Jomai's Arsenal will get locked out this turn unless Jomai pays one. Uh, Wayne Moon yep. is also coming in there for three. So it also, because that was an ice card, gave Jomai a frostbite. Yeah, so Jomai couldn't pay for the Arcane or the Cold Snap if they wanted to with that red in hand. But good thing for the Jomai, if there is no Popper on the side of Icelander, that is five damage still coming through. Right, because you can pay through your first Aether Ash with the Kyloria, get through the Frostbite, and then still have four more to come in with if Icelander does not have a Popper in hand. And we did not see the Poppers. Take five. Death oh, I like how Talishar like, literally froze the arsenal. I've never noticed that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the little lock symbol, I believe, is new, too. Kind of cute. Yeah, kind of cute. All of the, I always liked the Phantasm symbol. <laughs> Phantasm and ghost. Dominate, I think, are the two best ones. Oh, yeah, the little Dominate guy. He's cute, too, yeah. The little dude flexing. <laughs> Just flexing on you. All right. <laughs> so we got a Winter's Bite. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so pay one or discard a card. Uh, Jomai's normally don't mind paying the one because that does generate an ash for them. But Icelander kept every card, so you have to assume it will be a very strong hand. Starting with a yellow Aether Ice Vein, discard on a hit or pay two. So this will definitely take at least one of those blues out of Jomai's hand. Yeah, and that was fused as well, which is either Ice Vein is a that's a good card. So now Jomai has to think. They can pay you one to this effect to take three damage and then use the other two floating for the discard effect. Or they can pitch their blue and the red and just take no damage and not discard. Always a tricky situation knowing that the Icelander can play on both turns. Right. With one card in Icelander's hand, we have to assume that that's probably going into Arsenal and not coming in for a waning mood. Um, they're really thinking this through. Yeah, I think it's either. Do you remember what one. the card in? I in, do not remember what card they showed. It was so flat, fast that I just completely missed it. We do know it's oh, a blue the, ice I mean, card. The card it, um, I remember. I'm trying to remember what it was, um, but I'm also trying to remember the card in Dromai's Arsenal. Uh, that is the Dune Breaker one for five Phantasm going, I believe, is in the Arsenal. Right. Uh, starting the turn with an Invoke Mirror Guy, that is the one with no Phantasm to your next Dragon Attack. So this is almost like a free two damage. You're not scared of Poppers. If they give you a Frostbite, you have two floating. You're not really scared of much from Icelander right now while at seven. And no Storm Striders for the Icelander is a very important thing to point out. Normally, Icelanders could kill you around 7 to 10 life. Uh, but without those Storm Striders, you can, at max, do about 7 damage with the perfect uh, set of cards. Blue Aether Hail. 2 Some damage to any target. Hail. So this will kill the dragon in the Declare Attacker step which would make the Jomai lose their action point with no way to get it back. Very frustrating if you are the Jomai player here. The Sash of Sandakai being popped for one red resource because they have played a red card this turn, fully blocking out that waning moon. Poor little Ashwin gets shot out of the sky. Oh. <laughs> what a sad way to put it. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, these dragons are really hard for um, Icelander to deal with. So it's nice to see at least one little Aether Ashwin shot out the sky, I guess. It's a little <laughs> sad, but. You're either a dragon lover or a dragon hater. I am on the dragon hater side. So watching these 
If their ash wings are getting poked out one by one is always a good feeling. Brain freeze was played. Looking at Jomai's hand, they can take a card with cost zero and put it on the top of their deck. Looks like the only two options are dust up or invoke chromai. So invoke chromai going to the top of the library here. We've got Any enough moon? to come with a waning, waning room, moon, waning moon. Wow, this is a little bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> and still put a card in Arsenal. Yeah, importantly, Jomai down to four here. They have really good board states, so if they ever catch Ice Liner on a clunky hand, they can run away with this game, but they have to be very careful while at four. This Dunebreaker Senapai coming in for five, go again, really asking the question, do you have a popper? If you don't, this turn's going to get really bad for you really quickly. And no popper is yep, shown. and no popper. So if you're the drum I see, you're feeling pretty good about this game right now. You're at four, they're at eight. You have a million dragons on the board, another dragon in hand. You're pretty safe for most spells. Unless it's exactly a blue scolding into any moon. I mean, as you already pointed out, there are no um, no striders on the Icelander side. So it's not as scary as it would usually be. We do have blue Aether Hill. Yep. Shooting another one of those Ash Wings out of the sky. Just taking their shots and killing them mid-attack. It's just a sad way to go. They have a family ice you shot, shot out the sky? No. Iceland didn't even get two thoughts. She is just blowing these little dudes up. Enjoying it, too. <laughs> She's got that big smile on her face. <laughs> All reds again, John, from the Jomai player, unfortunately. So AB would be very effective this turn while at four. I believe that was a cold snap we saw played. I'm oh, it was the helmet. Yeah, um, it was so, yeah, it was glacial horns. Yeah, which freezes an ally and the arsenal. Looks like no. frozen mirror guy. Red aether ice vein coming in at for five. They only have AB through four. They can get five with silken form, but they don't have enough reds to pay for it. Not a great spot to be in. Because if you give up your whole hand, you might just be dead the Waning Moon plus card in the arsenal. But if you don't block this, you have to discard and you also die. The baiting, um, taking to, hmm, it's like, yeah, they're really thinking about it. Take two. Yeah, I think they're gonna, they're gonna, yeah, just save as much life as possible. I think 84 is the best play here. And just hope that last card in hand doesn't turn on Waning Moon. Just hope it's not a blue. Hope it's not a card they can play this turn from Arsenal. And then maybe you can get another jaw step where you can jaw some blues and get back into this game. Little Ash Wing Jerry coming in for one. Don't kill Jerry. Our brave Snyder. warrior, yeah. <laughs> oh. Polar Blast from okay. Arsenal. That will turn on Waning Moon, unfortunately. That... So good news is Jerry gets to live to see another day. Bad news is Dromai does get blasted with some arcane damage to finish that game out. Brave little warrior Jerry going out there saying, I'm coming in for one. Do you have the kill? Unfortunately <laughs> for Jerry's master, the kill was there. Elaine, how do you feel about that match? What are your thoughts? That was um that was good. I honestly the the Icelander pulled through there. The Dromai player set up a really nice board state, had the AB too, but just didn't just didn't have the resources in the end. I think that was that was a, a nail brighter. And I like seeing these players 
these heroes played in Clash. That was interesting. Yeah. Also, really effective decks for Clash. Like every time, every time we watch one of these games, I'm always like, these decks are so they're still so effective even in this format, which is just really fun to see. I agree 100%. That match felt a lot like drafting that set, uh, but both decks were just like overpowered draft decks, which is just a ton of fun. Lots of memories in that game. Lots of like cool tricks you can do with the Ash Rings and killing the Ash Rings on the, the stack. I Great played by both players there. Um, masterful games. Yeah, definitely. That was fun. Um, so where can the people find you, Mobogsley? The people can find me on Twitter at Mobogsley, YouTube at Mobogsley, and wherever else. You know, search my name on YouTube, and I've probably showed up on your favorite content creator's channel before. Elaine, where can they find yeah, you? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter under eHamOnTree. Ham on tree. It's very simple. Um and yeah, I do I do a podcast with Melody Likes called Pitch Perfect, and I run a league with Melody and Kiki called the Rainbow Pitch League. All of that information is in my bio on Twitter, though. So yeah. Well, we will see you guys in the next Clash Bash video. I believe top eight is coming up. So I can't wait to see what heroes we are gonna see in the top eight. I hope it's Kano. I hope it's Kasai. So <laughs> <laughs> We will see you guys next time. Have a good one.